Welcome back to Alex's Computer Lab. In the last episode, we took apart a Mac LC2, did some quick testing with it, and discovered that it worked mostly. However, it had an alarming tendency to power itself off and back on again. Uh, and while the hard drive would boot, it would then, uh, the keyboard and the mouse wouldn't work, and th there were some other odd behaviors, a lot of which could well be attributable to the power supply needing to be recapped. So because of that, as I said I would, I ordered a new power supply cap kit for this power supply. So this is an Aztec power supply, uh, model number AA1940. Um, a lot of people mentioned to me that this is the Dynacomp type power supply rather than the TDK type power supply. Uh, Apple part number 614028. Um, so it's interesting, I would I would always called them Aztec power supplies. Apple used a lot of them, but I'm guessing Dynacomp was probably the original designer. I truly do not know the history of those. So as we did before, I'm going to go ahead and take this power supply apart. And uh, as I commented in the last video, I didn't see any obvious problems with the caps and the power supply, but again, everything I'm reading says it's likely the issue. So we'll go ahead and take it apart. So standard warning, um, this power supply is a high voltage device. It is connected to mains power. So if you do not know what you're doing or you're not comfortable around high voltage, consider letting someone else who does do the repair for you. Or you can always buy a, a pre-recapped power supply. They are available. There are a number of folks out there who are doing that. Um, I will show in a minute the uh, caps that I bought for this repair. I bought them from console5.com. Uh, I've not dealt with them, but I've heard from people who repair game consoles that they are pretty darn good. Um, they provide good quality parts. So I was unaware that they did uh, cap kits for Macs, but they do. They have a number of them. So again, looking at this power supply, we have a good idea. This, this board shouldn't be too difficult to work on because it is single-sided. Uh, now we just have to figure out how to get the power supply out of its case here. So it looks like to me there's an attachment point right there in that screw and then there's a grounding screw right here. That it's possible that might be it. Uh, these guys do not seem to be, they seem to be just sitting there which is the IEC connector and the power switch. Let's go ahead and take the screw out of this. You may notice me having my hands around high voltage here, and in this case, um, this power supply has been sitting for a good week. Again, the, really the right thing to do is to check everything out and make sure it is fully discharged, but as everyone likes to say, especially people who are parents, and I am, do as I say, not as I do. Oh boy, I'll bet you're tired of hearing that from your parents when you were a kid. I know I was. So, you know, it's my job as a parent to say it to the next generation. Let's see here. Seems mostly loose. Yep. Looks good. And we'll take the housing out of the way here. Okay. So, according to the kit, we should be replacing, I believe, this guy. So we're supposed to be replacing C7, which is 180 microfarad, 400 volt, which appears to be this one. Uh, well, that looks like, according to me, I would say that's labeled C8. Or C2? I don't know. Let's see here. But clearly that's the cap. C9, which is 33 microfarad. That looks like C11 there, which is not one of the ones they list. This is 
Let's see. Boy, it's hard to see some of these. There's C7 over here, which is an X2 class. This is otherwise known as a, or a Y2 class cap. That's a bypass filtering cap. There's the X2 cap right there, otherwise known as the Rifa cap. Well, let's look and see what we've got in the kit. So let's open this package that the nice folks at Console 5 have sent me and see what we have. Using the knife that I have been told many times is the most dangerous type of razor knife, but knock on wood, I have yet to actually cut myself with. Having said that, what do you think the chances are that I will cut myself during the making of this video? Okay, so what do we have here? Ooh, they just sent me some brown paper. Just what I wanted. Boop. Well, let's take a look at the good stuff. my desk yet again. My desk which is horrible disaster as it usually is. Let's see what we have. We have a business card. Again, thank you console 5. Uh, Macintosh LC series, Dynacomp, DCF 353 power supply kit. Macintosh LC2 Tantalum Capacitor Kit, an Atomic Fireball. Ooh, I like fireballs. Keep that for later. So this is what we're going to be dealing with in this particular video. So I'll leave Dynacomp's card there. No doubt I'll put something on top of it in a minute, but uh, again, thanks Dynacomp. Of course they're not sponsoring this video but uh, I do appreciate the prompt service. So, let's see here. We have 1,000 microfarad, 10 volt, a pair of them, electrolytics. 350 microfarad, 50 volts. We have 82 microfarad, 50 volt. 82 microfarad, 50 volt, second one. 82 microfarad, 50 volt, third one. Big boy, 180 microfarad, 400 volt, right there. We have a 2200 microfarad, 10 volt. 10 microfarad, 50 volt, and 33 microfarad, 35 volt. So quite a collection of caps. So let's see here. We will certainly need this soldering iron. I guess we just look at the caps and see what we've got here. So I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 caps. And on the power supply there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, are there nine caps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Interesting. So I guess they want us to replace them all, which would make sense. So the reason you replace capacitors in power supply um, 
is because being inside the power supply, they're subject to the uh, the most heat, likely, because again, there's there's no fan in this power supply. There is a fan in the chassis. Uh, there's no fan in the power supply itself. Um, so there'll be plenty of heat inside of there. Also, there, um, you get a lot of onrush current when you power on the machine, uh, which means you have a ton of current hitting some of the capacitors here, especially the filtering capacitor over here, which and I'm a little surprised they didn't include those for replacement. But uh, maybe these capacitors are less likely to go belly up. As you can tell, I've not done a lot of Macintosh power supply repair. I haven't really needed to. Uh, I have a ton of vintage Macs, but it's not something you usually have issues with. I am reliably told, however, though, that in the LCs this is a common issue. So, I guess let's get started. Let's get out my flux. Flux is always a good thing. Again, this is a single-sided PCB. Um, so you can tell because there's no traces on the top side of the board here where all the capacitors and all the transformers and things like that coils are mounted. Um, but uh, yeah, everything's down here. So this is a fairly straightforward board. I'm guessing that this brown stuff is flux residue, but I don't know. I don't see that a lot of other places on the board. Excuse me. Hmm. Well, anyway, let's heat up my desoldering gun and get started with this. So, let's see. Yet again, I will move the screws somewhere else. Hopefully I won't lose them by the time it's time to put the uh, power supply back together again. That would be rather typical of me. You also notice that here, where my finger is, right there, um, there's a fair amount of hot glue. Again, that's normal. Um, you'll see some hot glue here and here. And it's because there's actually a fair bit of vibration uh, in these capacitors in a power supply. And it keeps them in place. So I don't know if I'll bother to replace that when I put it back together. We'll probably see how I feel when we come to that part. Let's see here. So, let's see. Probably start with the big capacitor right there simply because it's easy to find. And we're going to hope that the tip I have installed on my desoldering gun is large enough to fit over these. And the, the solder seems in good condition. You see it's nice and shiny. So, I don't suspect a lot of corrosion here, but it never hurts to apply. A little bit of extra flux to any solder. <coughs> Soldering gun seems excited, so let's give him a shot. Let's see here. Oh, looks like it'll fit. So a little bit of time to go through. It's a big cap on a big trace. <coughs> Not bad. Not bad. We got most of it. <coughs> so much on that one. That doesn't look too bad. I still see a little bit of solder, but... One thing you can do when desoldering, and I may have mentioned this before, is I'm going to wiggle the leg around a little bit and uh, try and get it mechanically disconnected from the side of the that it's in. Oh, and clearly I did a pretty good job because it fell right out, and that's really what you want. So there we go. There's our first cap. Big old 180. So Apple did helpfully, or uh, I guess manufacture this power supply, Aztec, did helpfully put the label as to the uh, orientation of this cap. Um, these caps are indeed polar, so it is important that you get them right. So, it's interesting, in my list of parts here, it does say that this big old cap should be C7, but I don't know. I've got the right part. I guess there's no reason to worry about that. So, there's that. And then right next to here we have this cap right there. 
which according to my list, uh, my power supply is C13, which again is not on the list, but we'll take him out anyway. I believe he is those two legs? I'm guessing so. Yeah, I think it's those two legs right there. So let's put some flux on them. Give the board a little bit of chance to heat up. Make sure we penetrate all the way through. Not too bad. Is definitely not going to fall to the board. As I mentioned, it is hot glued in place. But we still want to clear off the legs as much as we can. And you probably can't see that, but the legs are definitely wiggling there. So another thing it's always good to do is to note the position of the negative side of the capacitor before you take it out. Um, and this particular PCB, there is a black stripe right here where I'm rubbing my finger, um, also indicating negative. And that is associated with the silver stripe on this capacitor right there that I'm holding up. So that is the negative side. And there's lots of ways for capacitors to be marked for polarity. Let's take a look at this cap and see what he actually is. So of course bad capacitors must be male. So only good things in life are female. Okay, so 35 volts. 47 microfarad, 35 volt. I do not have that cap. So we may be putting that cap back in. So what we're going to do, we're going to quick check the capacitors on this capacitor with my multimeter. And again, to do that effectively, you do have to pull the capacitor out of the board. If you check it in series, you will get different value. Let's see what we see. Interesting. Let's check out this 180 microfarad large cap. So you can't see the display of my multimeter, but you can at least see me doing this, I suppose. Interesting. You'll notice me getting the Hopefully getting the priority right. Wondering about the batteries in my multimeter. Because in order to take an effective capacitance reading, multimeter does have to power up the cap. And I've had a battery warning on my multimeter for a long time. So it may well be that it has not got enough voltage left or enough power left in order to power up that cap properly. Multimeter number two. This multimeter is a present that my lovely wife gave me. And for that reason, I really like it. It's also kind of an interesting meter. It's, um, it's a handheld scope meter. It's not real fast scope meter, but um, it has a lot of functionality. So I haven't really tried it a ton in the oscilloscope mode, I've only used it in a very basic level, but uh, it seems to function well. I don't think it responds quite as fast as my other multimeter, but okay. Put my desoldering gun there, and we'll check out this capacitor. So again, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we'll stick with the polarity, correct polarity. And it will take a second for this to charge up. So 
This is a large capacitor. What else? So it's kind of hard to read most of these when they're in circuit because they're hot glued in place. But I'll probably just go ahead and desolder the, the lot of them. Pull them out. Start with this guy right there. Right next door where my fingers are. So again, we'll do our usual trick of putting some flux on. And you will see that there is some gunk on the board there. I'm not 100% sure what that gunk is. Could be flux residue, but this board is pretty well clean, so that also might be indication of the capacitor having leaked. <coughs> so let's see what we get here. So I have a full capacitor list now of what I need. And of those I have the 180 that I need for C8. I actually not need a 2200 at all. These are two 1000s. I also do not need those. So the only capacitor in the kit that matched what I need is this big guy right there. Hmm. <laughs> well, it did say it was for a Dynacomp power supply, so... I should have believed it. So let's put away my desoldering gun. We will indeed reinstall the large capacitor. This guy right here. So you get to see me do that. And then I will place an order for the other replacement capacitors and uh, hopefully we can get them relatively quickly. So again, as I mentioned, if you look at this PCB there where my finger is, there is a black line that is negative. Again, whoever designed this power supply, Aztec, they also put a plus sign right there for positive. So with this white stripe right here on the capacitor is negative. So we put it just like this. This capacitor actually may be a little bit physically too big. Yeah, I think it is. I don't think it's going to fit. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. I guess we're going to order all these caps. So the next thing you also have to do when ordering capacitors, by the way, of course, is deal with size. So if you notice, each one of these capacitors has is a its own specific diameter. I'll stand all these up here. There's the power supply, and I'll put the capacitors right next to it. So when you're ordering, you have to make sure your capacitors physically fit. There are There is definitely some variety within the same specification of capacitor, but uh, just make sure that you have ones that will physically fit your requirement here. So um, I guess that ends this part of the rebuild. There's not much more I can do. Uh, I will, uh, again, order capacitors. I can, of course, I can redo the LC2 logic board with these capacitors, but I'm not going to attempt to do that tonight. I'll just place the order for the capacitors, and uh, hopefully they will come in quickly. So, I don't know if I will do another section. I probably will. I'll do another section of voiceover of uh, picking out the capacitors and showing you how to do that. But uh, either way, uh, thanks for your time. I hope, uh, while I didn't accomplish a lot, I hope it was at least uh, entertaining to watch me burn myself. So that's at least something, right? You can get some uh, laughter value out of this. But uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about capacitors and um, boards and uh, how to deal with stuck capacitors and hot glue. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. This is again Alex from Alex's Computer Lab. Have a good evening. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the capacitors that I captured earlier and we're going to attempt to find replacements for them on digikey.com. Um, you can of course find capacitors at a variety of sources, but digikey is my preferred reseller. I find that they have the most easy to navigate site, so we're going to use them here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go bit by bit. And we're going to start first with a large uh, 180 microfarad 400 volt capacitor CA. So in order to find capacitors, we're going to scroll down here. And we're going to go to semiconductors. Okay, so now we're going to go to capacitors. We're going to first by saying that we want in stock capacitors. And then we're going to look for aluminum electrolytic capacitors because that's what the type of all of these capacitors are. Now, things that we want. So this is where we do our filtering. So this is all of our selections we can have here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other options we have here. So we have manufacturer series, packaging, part status. Uh, so we'll say active parts. We're going to go, next thing we're going to pick is how our mounting is. We're going to say we want through hole parts. So we'll find that over here. Mounting type, through hole. So the other option, through hole press fit, those are kinked leg solder. Uh, kinked leg capacitors so they will uh, they will stay in the board by themselves so the next thing packaging case we're going to go with radial capacitors so axial capacitors have a leg on each side uh, of the capacitor on each end like a bar magnet radial capacitors will have legs on both both legs on one side Again, we only need two leads, so we only need a standard radial. Okay. Our next capacitors are a pair of 1200 microfarads or 1.2 farad. Um, one is 10 volt, one is 16 volt. Uh, one is 10 millimeter in diameter, one is 12. So one's a little tubbier than the other, 105 degree again. So a little electrolytic. So we'll do them one by one. So again, we want active parts, capacitance, 1200, through hole, apply, radial can, apply. Again, our lead spacing on these is one of them is five millimeter. The other is, they're both five millimeter. Okay, both the fat and the skinny one. It's five millimeter. Okay, our maximum height on these is 24 millimeters. So 25 is okay. Our diameter is 10 millimeter, so these two are both okay. And again, we'll make a very minor change to this one when we go to the fatter capacitor. Okay, so we need at least 10 volts. So we'll say 10, 16, 25, apply. And again, we want Nishikon caps. Okay. I believe the original is the same series as the others. Yeah, they're all LXFs. Okay, so that should be fine. So we'll go back to our list. LXF, 10 volt, 1200, so rated for ripple of 1260 microamps. So we'll go back to our list now, and we'll sort by low price. 72, so we've already bought similar caps before. Yeah, this should be identical. So we'll just add another one to this list. UHE, the one we bought before. I should have noticed it was on my list at the same time. So we'll just add C18. So um, because of that, I'm going to now, I'm going to uncheck dimension, apply, because I'm going to go back and I'm going to specify the larger cap, because we already know the smaller one. So the larger one was a dimension of 12 millimeters. So there we go. So 
So we'll go back to our list. 1,200, 16. So 1,440. So 12 and a half by 20 is this one. So 1,340 microamps. Okay, let's look at our ripple. Yeah, our ripple is fine on either one of these. No problems. So we'll just take the least expensive. They're both 82 cents, makes no difference. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. So these are identical capacitors. The only difference is one comes in bulk, one is cut tape or tape in box. Doesn't make any difference to us. That really matters for folks who are doing automated assembly. So we're going to say one of these. We'll add it to our bomb. Existing bomb. Add to bomb. This is C19, which is our last capacitor. Okay. And then we're going to add to our previous capacitors right here, our C21 and C23. And we're also going to add C18, because it is the same. And we're going to say 3. If you look here, we get a price break if we order 10. And sometimes, as you can see, the price break is pretty significant, but um, it doesn't help us. We don't need that many caps. OK. So that is it. So that is how you do a bomb for an order from DigiKey. So all we have to do now is we add it to the cart and place our order. So I hope that was interesting and helpful to you. Again, have a good evening, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion and demonstration. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like to see more like it, please come back. We will definitely have more Merchantosh content over the rest of this month. Again, go check out Joe's Computer Museum for more uh, Merchantosh content, and there will be a link to the playlist attached to this video.